Ah, oh, yeah. It's Wednesday, January 6th. Another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I know it's looking fucking wild out there, but it's business as usual. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like every other day. Business is war. I've said that time and time again. I've told myself, I've repeated it to myself. I've never, I can't attest to having been in armed conflict and some sort of armed engagement. I can't admit to it, but I've been in some pretty tight spots. And I'm still here to talk about it so long as I'm not dead, it's a good day. <laughs> so long as I'm not dead, <clears throat> I can continue on conducting my business, conducting my personal war. It's a war of, um, of good and evil. It always has been. And it's not to sound, again, esoteric or deep, but... It's the battle for becoming better or remaining the same or, or even undoing. It's the battle between being better or being worse. That's about it, really. It wasn't too long ago that I had my own personal social media accounts disabled and deleted completely. But from it, you know what I saw? I saw innovation. I saw myself getting better. Because progress, I guess what modern or postmodern society has embraced as progress <laughs> does not mean innovation at all progress literally definite by definition means continuation means continuance it means just the the ongoing of whatever line of theory we're on just whatever line of thought we're on paradoxical or not so it could be um, a bad line of thought but if we continue down it in the name of progress sooner or later we'll get what we deserve we'll find what we're looking for and I am using we the royal we because I'm still in so much as I want to change and innovate be that change agent in a society stuck so far up its ass in progress. I'm still a part of it. <laughs> so all I can do is, uh, is push and pull my way. And it's not so much my way. It's just a way I see that's better. A way I see that's more innovative. A way that I see is innovative, just different from what's occurring now. Try getting that through someone's head today, in today's day and age, and it'll be considered a macroaggression. Because a microaggression is just what, like a gesture, like a, like a wince, or a, like, a, like a making a face, like a scowl, that's a microaggression. And then a macroaggression is actually donning the cloak and dagger, committing to a discussion, committing to an, a discourse, an argument, and conducting skullduggery inside of somebody else's mind and just drawing and quartering their own illogical, irrational thoughts. Yeah, I'm just shattering the reality. <laughs> just 
fucking destroying their petty dreams of progressivism with something innovative. Now that shit's macro aggressive. <laughs> That's some corporate cowboy shit. My name is Alex. I'll be your intern. This is the Corporate Cowboys podcast powered by Incorporating Associates. You can find us on Instagram handle at incorporating dot associates dot I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's incorporating dot associates underscore IA. You can find us on Patreon, Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, all um, all past episodes will be put up. Bonus episodes will be uh, dropped into a different tier. So if y'all want to be a part of that, as soon as we have um, a decent amount. Well, I mean, as soon as we have even one. Because this is the beginning of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And I don't see it ending anytime soon. Um, this was a... Uh, I guess a volunteer project on uh, myself got together with a couple of heads and I drew the shortest straw having the cleanest record out of all of them and here I am today I may not be the face yet because we um, our business attire includes ski masks and ties so I may not be the face but I'll be the voice for now Anybody could be a corporate cowboy. It's easy as fuck. Today's episode is about innovation. Innovation and what it means for a corporate cowboy. For those who are, I guess, pursuing, in the pursuance of corporate cowboy shit. To act and be a corporate cowboy. Um, today is a special day for many. And then for others like myself, it's not at all. It's like every other day. If the, you know, the world could be falling apart all around you. And if you're losing your head, you're already dead. That's about it. You have to have faith you have to believe not only in God, but in yourself, whether or not you could survive. Granted, there will always be things more, what is it, forceful than ourselves, be they bombs, be they fucking warheads, be they Apache attack helicopters that can take us out of the game. But until those things are at our front door, you don't have to worry too much about them. If you're in a position where you can actively interact with one, if you can, what is it? Yeah, interact or manipulate or somehow, what is it, control or mitigate a situation where force might be brought down upon people, then that's on you, man. You act as righteous as you believe you should be acting. But for the large majority of people who aren't in, I don't know, the armed forces or just don't have hitters on the payroll like that, we're just corporate cowboys doing our own thing, making America, making society better. And not again, not again. We're just making it better. The shit doesn't stop. Because when you believe you have to do something again, it's because somewhere along the way, you believe innovation ceased. You lost faith in innovation. And that, that's just fucking sad. That's admitting defeat before thinking you have to restart or commit to a great reset. 
Fucking bullshit. Business is war, man. Business is fucking war. It ain't over till you're fucking dead. That's it. That's it. Those who retire voluntarily, cool. I mean, they they definitely should retire themselves when they feel they've become less active, I suppose. Not of less value because they could still be consulted. But when they feel like they've become less active, they want to become less active. They make that conscious choice to become less active in business. They're no longer a player. They might choose to upgrade or promote themselves to a coach. But if you aren't playing, you're spectating. And if you aren't spectating, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, yo? If you're not if you don't if you're not watching the game, and again, I'm not one for sports. But if you aren't watching life pass you by, my guy, then it's just fucking death coming at you. That's it. You think life comes at you fast? Death is the type of thing that comes at you slow. You don't see coming. (laughs) Oh, guys and girls, ladies and gents. If you stuck around this long, um, yeah, rest assured that I'll be committing to uh, to a schedule. I want to put down at least a, at least an hour a week, and I'll do that in between breaks. I don't know if I'll be piecing it up um, over a number of days. So far, these first few episodes of the podcast have been done in one or two takes each, but in the future because the semester is about to start up next Monday, the 11th of January. I don't know, maybe during lunch or during a break, I might sneak off and put down a solid 15, 20 minutes, half an hour or in a single pool, one hour, and upload it. The goal of this podcast is to help myself as much as I want to help, as much as I would like to help others. The goal of this podcast is to help myself in as much as I would love to help others. And um, I believe doing so in a verbal manner will help me develop my social skills in interacting not just with myself while I talk to myself but in becoming better able to expound on ideas elaborate on on logic tighten up arguments and um, ground just ground my theories ground my uh, my rationale so if you've stuck around this long I do appreciate it keep in mind that a lot of this I'm doing for myself um, interviews in the future will be with colleagues I will uh, advise them and and consult them for uh, for their opinions for their ideas for their theories and the conversations that take place later on are going to be um, as if between friends, as if between friends, as if between associates. If I should find somebody who wants to be my enemy and be on this podcast, fuck, more power to them, right? But more often than not, they end up becoming associates. Not so much friends, but just people I know. Or people I know who know other people. Associates. That's all. And in that way, I innovate my social networks. I don't grow old and progress with the same fucking social network that 
I either came into this world with or I was handed. <laughs> Fuck all that bullshit. It's innovation. Innovation versus progressivism. Innovation versus progression. <laughs> and those aren't even opposites. In my mind, I, um, in my professional experience, I was a researcher and I also studied at a research university and at research university for my undergraduate studies in sociology, I, um, I wanted to explore the concepts of innovation and its opposite which I believe to be corruption, innovation and corruption. And that's not to say that progression and corruption are the same, but there is some correlation between the two, between corruption and progression, wherein innovation is something that's constantly changing, constantly becoming better, one would hope, in order to continue its reproduction, in order to continue its production into making something else better. So reproducing the actual process of innovation, reproducing the opportunity creation for betterment. And uh, at any point in time, if there's a failure there, the process becomes... By definition, corruption. Literally corruption. Now, you might think we're only speaking theory. We're only talking theoretical here. But you take that process and you apply it to a person, a group of individuals, an organization. You apply it to society. And there you'll find where innovation starts and where corruption takes over. It's pretty fucking wild. It's fucking wild. And many, many associates that I've had the pleasure of dealing with can relate to me or have related to me stories in which they found themselves in a position to promote innovation, but either faced corruption, became corrupted, or um, overcame corruption. And those are, those are the stories that really make my hair stand on end. Those are the those those situations, those circumstances, whether they're related to me or I experience them myself, I suppose make me a junkie for them. There's a there's a twinge, is it a twinge? There's a little spike in adrenaline of adrenaline that one experiences when when confronted with a threat to innovation, when confronted to a threat to being better, when confronted just for the sake of being good. Again, this, is, this does go back to good versus evil, but at no point professionally would I ever bring up good and evil in a conference room unless <clears throat> I'm gonna air the bitch out or something. <laughs> That's it. I'm not going to bring in good versus evil or God and the devil in, 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 a, in a conference unless, unless it's a last resort. Innovation and corruption is enough. Why? Because innovation is empowering. Innovation is inspiring. One wants to aspire to innovate, to be better to make what is already good better in the hopes that the originator, whoever originated, whoever came up with this good process 
will wholly embrace innovation to make the process better, to update, to keep up with, with advancement, to advance, to advance good, to push innovation. Otherwise, somewhere, somehow, corruption has crept in. And it's not the end-all, be-all. Innovation, well, innovation just never ends. So that can't be the end-all, be-all. Innovation just is. Corruption, definitely not the end-all, be-all. What corruption does is just create a different set of opportunities. Um, slightly more gray area, if you will. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say, you know, fucking dark ops or black ops, any of like any of that, any of that shit. It's all gray. It's all gray area. Even innovation is gray. Corruption is just a different shade of gray. That's all. <laughs> but it's all grayscale. I gotta no, I don't have a funny story. I just have a funny um I guess I have a funny perspective on on life when you live it in grayscale. Don't get me wrong, I love color. But grayscale is um uh, that's why I, I hardly use any color like in my doodles. I'll I'll doodle or I'll I'll draw something and I find myself using grayscale more often than not. I don't know. It's it's appealing because then you can imagine color where you want to see it. But I digress. When it comes to innovation, it's difficult bringing it to the forefront. It's difficult to bring it to the light it's difficult to sell to sell it on someone who's already settled my associates many of them have uh and i've experienced this myself if you've ever had a a good idea or a bright idea say you're working in a company doesn't matter how big doesn't matter the size because this process is everywhere innovation is an in, in, innovation is what powers capitalism essentially i mean if capitalism is the basis for for life is the basis for civilization innovation is essentially what begot capitalism but trying to um but like all good ideas, they require legwork. All, like all good ideas require legwork. If not some lip service, at least some lip service, they do require legwork. So working inside of a company, doesn't matter how large, you take your good idea to make the company better or to make um, your job more effective more um reputable to make you know to to clean up the the company's image or to improve it again for the sake of innovation this is assuming you're working for a righteous company and you're more than willing to dedicate a few years of your life maybe even start a family on on the company's credit that sort of thing so you bring a good idea to your manager and your manager has been settled for quite some time. They believe, I don't know, that they've made it or don't want to don't want to continue any further. It's funny that I use continue now because, I mean, that implies progression. They don't want to progress any further into the company. So what they just sit, they just sit down, lay down and die. So you take your good idea to your manager and you propose it to them, you pitch it to them. And uh, they have the option to validate it, pick it up and run with it, you know, to, to implement it. 
and in that way help you deliver it to the organization, help you introduce it, help you what's the what's the term I'm looking for? Help you integrate it nice, help you integrate it into the organization. Because it sounds like an injection. It sounds like an injection of a good idea. I mean, but it's true. It's like innovation. Innovation in itself is like the vaccine that you don't need to test. It's the vaccine that doesn't fail. It's just innovation. It's a better idea when it's backed by logic and reason. When it's backed by by understanding. But if your manager doesn't want to work more, if they've become complacent, if they've settled for the amount of work, the amount of responsibility they have now, if they're happy with, well, maybe not even happy, if they're just content with what they're being paid now and don't don't see the benefit or don't appreciate the benefit of innovation, maybe they're just haters they just fucking hate on you because X, Y, and Z, you're younger, you're black, you're white, you're fucking Mexican, whatever. You're short, you're tall. They could swat your idea down. Effectively suppressing innovation and tell you, I don't know, get you off their back with some bullshit excuse like like um we don't we don't pay you for good ideas or we don't pay you to think just do your work or or uh, a good one i've heard is um wait 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 until you get promoted and then when you get promoted you can implement any rule you want and I mean, that shit, that's fucked up in saying that. And that hurts innovation because what you learn is that your manager is essentially corrupted. And there's only really a handful of ways to handle them. Um, they all require additional research and investigation on your part. So, yeah added legwork but that's the sacrifice a corporate cowboy has to take on it's not even a sacrifice it's a fucking investment it's all a fucking investment corporate cowboys don't sacrifice shit maybe time but we're all headed to the grave so what the fuck is time really but it'll require slightly more investment of time a slightly larger investment of time in order to investigate and explore the company relations, what the hierarchy looks like, if you could jump the manager. I mean, like, not jump, like, beat them down, and fucking kneecap them or whatever. No, like, if you can um, go over the manager's head, and I don't, and not, I don't know, I do know, if you can go over the manager's head and speak to their manager or speak to, Someone um, who controls a much larger region, so they could be like in a, in a completely other region. If this is a large company or a com or a, another department, if it's a similar department with a similar process that you're looking to innovate, maybe you want to introduce it through a secondary channel. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously you have the greatest experience with the channel that you're working in now, with the department that you're working in now, and the idea that you might come up with in order to improve it is um, strictly personalized to your department, your channel, your, your corner of the organization in which you find yourself with and what you find yourself in. So if your manager ain't having it, who are you supposed to go to? Well, you want to identify other players who have a similar title, such as yourself, who might be in a similar situation in terms of hierarchy, might, might be in a similar position, 
of, of a similar rank and maybe approach approach your counterpart your your uh your like counterpart your similar counterpart and pitch them the idea get them on board and then that way you approach their manager because it, it'll be like a fresh board like a fresh slate again this this all hinges on how wide the um how wide the degrees of communication are within the organization so if like departmental managers speak to one another and this motherfucker named alex has become an issue in one department and the department head pretty much puts out puts out the um not the order but fucking puts out the notice you know a little bolo be on the lookout for alex alex is starting shit you know, I might be skating on thin ice before I even get to my counterpart in the organization. And that's hard, man. That, that's hard. It takes a lot of navigation. It takes fucking finesse. It takes agility. You have to be adaptable. Um, otherwise, you got to shut your manager up before they shut you down. <laughs> um so you go to your counterpart, you approach their manager, and now it's two people. It's yourself, your counterpart, going to their manager with what appears to be a fresh idea. And this is dependent on your manager not having communicated with their manager. Good luck. Last resort is leaving the organization, finding a similar organization, a like organization, and then finding your fucking counterpart in that organization. And then that's just a whole nother game, baby. That, <laughs> that's outright corporate cowboy shit. Today's sponsor, hold on, I'm thinking. I'm thinking today's sponsor is Well, I don't have corporate sponsors, like I said. So, I mean, there aren't any ad reads, but I had one actually before I started the episode and got lost in my train of thought for uh, speaking on innovation. And, and really, I'm only speaking on just the side of innovation. I can speak on the side of corruption, but that's going to be uh, a later podcast when I have slightly more listeners. I mean, I'm gonna be pushing the envelope folks because well pushing the envelope is how you get shit done especially in corporate where you literally deal with envelopes <laughs> folks use that term like uh like that motherfucker pushes the envelope and really it's just it's being a edgy edgy little bitch and um there are, there are more than enough of those in corporate but they aren't pushing the envelope on shit. So I suppose I'll speak on that on a later episode. Today I'm just speaking on innovation and progression. Innovation versus progressivism and how fucked it is to be caught up in the hamster wheel that is progression. <laughs> Fuck it. Today's sponsor is going to be knives. Knives of all kinds. I don't have a corporate sponsor, like I said. If y'all would like to uh, sponsor me, by all means, you definitely can. Um, you can shoot me a message on Instagram or Patreon, even. 
Um, you can also send me a letter and or, I don't know, your product to sponsor the show. They could be knives, pieces, if you want to piecemeal it. And then I can either give a short review in conjunction with the sponsorship. Um, you can send me questionable items, but nothing outright contraband, at least that I know of. So obviously I'm I'm going to keep my plausible deniability. And you can send uh, those items, your, a letter just saying, hey, what's up, Alex? Or what's good with it? Corporate cowboys. Stories, comments, you know, personal experiences. I appreciate those things on paper because, um, well, I mean, I guess the more paper you use, what is it? Hold on, hold on. Items on paper aren't easily traced. So you can put it down on fucking college ruled in pen, preferably, or pencil, and mail it to P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. And, uh, Every so often, we have the box checked and the mail forwarded. Again, that's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. Send. Send anything uh, you think a corporate cowboy should have. I mean, I'm in school now, but once I'm out, oh man, it's back to work. No doubt, I have things cooking now. Hold on. (laughs) Apologies. Distractions with the landline. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, knives. Knives are, are tools. Pocket knives, folding knives, fixed blades. Um, I'm not too much into exotic deals like uh, karambits and um, what are those other ones? Like the, um, yeah, I'm just not into like huge exotic blades. Now I'm carrying just a standard EDC, like a Spyderco or, or a Benchmade. Um, I have, I have, uh, shopped around for other American knife makers, but now while I'm using and beating the ones that I have, and not beating, not abusing, but while I use the ones that I have, maybe I'll save up for something else, sell what I have, and acquire something new. And so the knife cycle continues. But as far as having a a grand collection, no, I'm not your guy, I'm sorry. I don't have a huge collection of items. Just shit that I use and keep moving like you would with anything you dirty up. You just use and keep it moving. <laughs> oh, I remember now. I was originally going to have the sponsor be gloves for items you use, get dirty, and keep it moving with. <laughs> Fuck it. Double sponsorship. Knives and gloves, baby, because... You need something that won't slip from your grip. Um, Gloves of all kinds, man. Fucking mechanics, leather, rubber nitrile. 
latex, all that. Um, yeah, gloves are gloves are the shit. Gloves are it. And if you're out there wearing a mask right now, get some fucking gloves too, bitch. Um, or I mean, you know, wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. What the fuck do I care? I've um, I feel like I want to say. I do want to say, actually, I want to start like, um, I want to defer to like a balaclava, just like a fucking ski mask. There are those ski masks where like the, the mouth hole isn't cut out. So I could still be like in compliance, right? But just outright looking like a menace kind of thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That shit just cracks me up. It makes me laugh. So while I'm like protecting others, I'm also intimidating them at the same time. Like, fuck this bitch assness. Fuck this bitch made fuckery where I gotta go out there and wear a mask because people believe, I don't know, that it protects. I get if you have active symptoms and you're coughing and wheezing and spraying and baptizing motherfuckers with your saliva your contagious germy ass saliva but if none of that shit is going down like yeah no i've i've consulted with with medical experts sorry maybe not experts that word irks me every now and then but professionals medical professionals who have experience experienced medical professionals and yeah that's pretty much what masks are for <laughs> but um yeah I, I i guess i guess um we'll find out when these when these masks come in these balaclavas come in i'll tell you how that works out in real life <laughs> um but yeah, the sponsor was met, was supposed to be gloves, and I was I I kept it like in the back of my mind where I told myself not to forget to be sure to bring it up because it would have been a funny sponsor, and uh, now look at me I I slipped up, and got caught pausing for like fucking half a minute thinking about who the sponsor was and said Ooh, knives. Fucking, <laughs> but yo, knives are cool. Don't get me wrong. You can use knives for an assortment of tasks, and um, and yo, they get the job done. If you don't have a knife, get something, something else that's sharp. Even a piece of paper. Even a piece of paper applied correctly, you got yourself a tool, um, or something pointy. I mean, a pencil, uh, you know, anything shank like that you can shiv with, you know, this is a matter of what you're using, how you're using it, much like a knife. They are all tools. They are all tools to use. And knowing how to use them ultimately is what's going to be your grace, saving or not. You're saving grace or not, but it's going to be with grace. Now, back to the show. So, um, in coming back around to innovation, I'm not going to say, dang, I, I, I kind of wanted to tie innovation into like knife, knives and knife making, but I don't know anything about knife making very little. I mean, I do know about knife making, but I know very little compared to folks who actually are in that industry hands-on and I unfortunately am not I might be experienced in um, many aspects of working with metal but knife making is not one of them um, it appears simple enough and the process itself I'm sure has been innovated over the years with centuries of fucking trial and error research and experimentation and in and, and innovation and, and in knives it starts with a good idea like everything else it starts with a good idea and from there it's capitalized on and then 
your good idea becomes profitable. And I sure do hope to God that those profits are being reinvested in good or better ideas. If not, if, <laughs> I mean, and, and this seems to be a, a reoccurring theme that people love to bitch about is that corporations go out of their way to buy new patents in order for, I guess, new ideas to never hit the market, thus suppressing innovation. And yeah, I mean, point taken, that shit does happen. I've borne witness to it. I've bared witness to it, borne witness. I've witnessed it. And yeah, that shit does happen. And what the... um. What the logic behind it is, is that the money required to invest into this new idea would be more than if simply than if simply the status quo were to remain the same. And the the I guess the older good idea, I mean, it's still good. It's just old. Now it's dated were to remain in place. And um, that works. Only until it doesn't. Only until it doesn't. Um, I think, or I I know that good ideas are like babies to some people. Are like their their pride, their joy, their whole livelihood, their identity rests on the one good idea that made them a millionaire. And in staying a millionaire, or or in believing they can stay a millionaire by not innovating. They opt to suppress innovation. They opt to suppress good ideas that aren't theirs out of fucking selfishness, out of uh, underappreciation, under misunderstanding, miscomprehension, under the guise of importance because what they were the first ones into the market, so they believe they own the fucking market. So instead of working to expand the market, to create or innovate the market itself even, and in that way grow the pie, they want to keep the pie the same. And they want to keep everybody else from tasting the pie. That's not, that's not how business works at all. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you heard me the first time, business is war. Good ideas are a dime a dozen. Good ideas are a fucking dime a dozen. It's my personal belief. Everyone has a million, if not a multi-million dollar idea in their fucking head. The only reason they're not making a million dollars off it right now or multiple million dollars off it right now is because they may not have the tools, the skill, the experience to pull this idea, to distill this idea from their head, put it down on paper. And when I mean on paper, I do not mean on computer, put it down on paper. That's just my paranoia talking. That'll be another episode. Put it down on paper with pen. Think it through. See it through on paper first in a logical and rational manner. Package it. Pitch it. And sell it. That's how you make a million dollars off of an idea. That's, that's how you do it. This, this podcast is one idea. One idea that I know can net me a million dollars. I don't look forward to making a million dollars. Me personally, no. Why would I why would I want to be a millionaire? No, not at all. I want the message to be worth the million dollars. I'm cool with living off a couple hundred grand. A couple hundred grand a year compared to being a millionaire and having a target on my back all the time or just having that elevated level of stress where my mind becomes twisted 
and distorted where I believe I have to knock other motherfuckers out who have good ideas because only I can have a good idea. Nah, that shit, that shit becomes scary quick. And I'm not, I'm not in the business of being scary. I'm in the business of war, baby. I'm in the business of business. I'm a person of business. That's it. And um, war has many fronts. War has many fronts. And I'm sure many folks are aware that, you know, there's conventional warfare. There's first, second, third, fourth gen. Uh, there's a fifth gen out there too. Whether or not I want to delve into it and explore it again. Again. It, 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 might, it might just be this. What's what I'm speaking about. Just the spiritual warfare. Just being able to to engage in in the kind of discourse where taboos are broken down and life and death is put on the table for assessment and <laughs> you gotta draw straws kind of thing with who has a good idea and who doesn't and you either get behind the best idea one that serves the notion of opportunity creation, of improvement, constant improvement, or you can, um, or you can, you know, hold on, what's a good, what's a good euphemism for this one? I'll just say, or you can kill Caesar, because only because I don't want to say like, or you can kill Christ. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, because I mean that's. Essentially what a good idea is. A good idea is ever-changing, everlasting, always good, improving, betterment, that sort of thing. But I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put myself on that fucking level. Hold on. There you go. Or you can kill the messenger. I like that. I like that. Because it sounds very fucking common. It sounds like commoner speak. Yeah, or you can kill the messenger of good ideas and then you got a fucking shitstorm. Why? Because the messenger, that messenger of good ideas was the first good idea. And as soon as you suppress, as soon as you suppress innovation, what you don't think you're going to fucking drown in innovation around you? Yeah. If you don't embrace, if you don't embrace what is it? <laughs> the donut. If you don't embrace the fucking life preserver that's being thrown at you the preserver of life essentially like you won't like you won't live forever but the idea the good that you had caused to grow the good in which your organization originated from will live on that's the life preserver so if you don't catch on if you don't reach out if you don't embrace if you don't take hold if you don't aid assist support good ideas coming to you from people who want to create that improvement you're gonna fucking drown in innovation all around you and we've seen that before we've seen that before we've seen that with organizations that gone out of business right before our eyes Fucking Blockbuster, fucking Radio Shack, fucking, yeah, I'm going to venture to say Enron, though that requires some digging, which I don't have the time for now. Fucking Toys R Us, fucking, who else? <laughs> Circuit City? Did I say Circuit City already? Folks who who more than likely, I'm going to say more than likely, I'm almost 100%, almost 100%, I would put a dollar, I would put a fucking dollar on the fact that there was a good idea, at least one fucking floating around the conference rooms, fucking floating around the cubicles, fucking floating around the store floors. There was a good idea for how to preserve the organizations. And I know because 
I've worked on the store floor for a retail organization, for a, an automotive parts store. I'll tell you that story later in another episode, likely, because I'm running short now. But there was, there had to have been, a dollar says it, fucking dollar says it, that there was a good idea in those times that could have been that could have been sifted out that could have been mined for that could have that could have been implemented that could have been capitalized on in order to preserve the organizations those those very companies that went out and um well i'm not i'm not going to say what happened that caused for them to go out of business that's for you to deduce from everything you've learned today on this on on just this episode what the fuck do you think happened <laughs> yo okay that's that's again i don't know what the uh what the concept with that um with that argumentation what what's that called what that strategy is called, what that debate strategy, but it's more so an argumentation, an argumentation strategy. What it's called where I set up, I set up premises, right? And I, I've done so in the past 45 minutes, educating and, and conceptualizing and then formalizing the concepts that I'm trying to get across in terms of innovation and corruption and and the whole time I've been speaking on innovation and, and I said that this episode would be strictly from the perspective of innovation. And now I've made an example of what innovation ought to do, how it ought to work within organizations. And then by listing those organizations that I've since gone out of business, RIP. I ask, what do you suppose happened? That's corruption. It's corruption, baby. That's all. Obviously not innovation. Otherwise, they'd be with us today. But something, someone, somewhere along the way, got axed got their got their shit pushed in got their ideas suppressed probably got laughed at mocked we're told to wait wait until you get promoted <laughs> two months away from fucking going bankrupt a dollar says it a dollar says it somebody at radio shack had the idea for I don't know, a merger or a divestment or something in order to preserve Radio Shack, keep it open. And um, holy shit, that was me. That was me. I don't know why I use Radio Shack as an example, but that was me. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a story for another time. How the automotive parts store I was at and I even... Damn, that's eerie, dude, because I talked myself into that one. I, I walked right into that one. Kind of how like I walked you into the answer of what do you suppose happened in these organizations? And obviously it's corruption. Um, no, I, I was in that position to uh, to pitch to pitch my to my manager the idea for improving the auto parts store that I was working at where I worked as a, just as a retail clerk, as a retail person, nobody big. And, um, holy shit, that's fucking nuts. Okay. Um, but yeah, a dollar says it somewhere, someone, something along the way inside of Radio Shack though, you see? So inside of Radio Shack, while I was at this auto parts store, I was on the, I was on the store floor level. There had to have been somebody on the fucking store floor, on the storefront level there, you know, working the floor, who had that idea, who had that spark to keep Radio Shack alive, to keep Radio Shack from croaking 
And they were probably laughed at, they were mocked, they were told to shut up and get back to work, dust dust the shelves of, of the merchandise that likely wasn't moving in the last couple of months as they, as, you know, in their last gasps of, of economic fiscal year before, you know, calling it quits. Yeah, there had to have been somebody that um, had the idea, that had the idea for how to innovate Radio Shack and bring it, bring it into the future and preserve it. And um, damn, if that person ever hears it, or if, you know, the manager at Radio Shack ever hears it, because again, these ideas can, can come from anywhere. So if the manager hears it, the middle manager hears it, the VP, the vice president, any executive hears it. If the CEO hears it, salute to them, you know, if they couldn't sell it. But hey, a good idea is a good idea. And, you know, maybe they just couldn't sell it to their board. And, uh, or, or again, their board was too settled in, too complacent, content, with the status quo, maybe if Radio Shack went bankrupt, they all bounced out with corporate parachutes and they couldn't give the minim- a, a minimalist fuck. And it's hard. It's a tough fucking spot to be in. It's a squeeze, my guy. It's a squeeze. It's a squeeze. It's not a pull. It's a fucking squeeze. Either whether you hold your breath or you gently exhale, but it's a squeeze. Every fucking time.